BBC Radio Sheffield. So it's Toby at Breakfast, it's BBC Radio Sheffield, and it's time for the last of our party leader interviews as we look ahead to this year's local government elections. Now, we're focusing on Sheffield this week, where two-thirds of the seats are up for grabs after the delay of elections last year. The PCC is also up for grabs. There's a mayoral election in Donny, is there, am I right? There's, there's elections left, right and centre, to be fair. Uh, so today, we've done left and right, let's do centre. We've heard this week from the Greens, we've heard from the Conservatives, and we've heard from Labour, uh, who are the current incumbents in Town Hall. Let's now talk to the leader of the Lib Dem group, Shafak Mohammed. He joins us this morning. Morning, Shafak. Good morning, Good morning Toby. So, it's been a long time since you had any power, really, at the Town Hall. I remember the days of uh, you and uh, Paul, now Lord Scriven. Are things likely to change this year? Well, there's a real opportunity for people of Sheffield, like you're right, first time in a decade, that, you know, power could swing away from Labour. We could have a situation uh, of no overall control, uh, which means that we could bring some radical change in not just uh, who runs the Town Hall, but more importantly, how the city council functions and how we actually go forward. And do you think that people think that's the kind of thing you'll bring? Look at the, uh, the, the their experience recent, well, not recently, is it? But their experience of Lib Dems that, that maybe has coloured the way they think of them because you did lead Sheffield City Council and, and the, you were a big party nationally and then showed up the Conservatives and you're down to, what, eight MPs? And who's the Lib Dems these days? Look, Toby... This is not about national politics. This is about local politics. And clearly people had their say in 2019. And actually, this is really important going forward post-COVID about how our city functions. And for me, it's not just going to be about what we as 84 councillors do in that town hall. That's probably been the problem for the last 10 years. We've always centralised. We've not actually trusted our communities. And more importantly, we've centralised the power into just 10 councillors and basically disenfranchised, you know, huge swathes of the city and who feel basically left out, don't have a voice, and we've got to re-engage with that. And I think the Lib Dems are in a prime position because that's what we believe in, Toby. It's in our DNA to actually entrust people, to actually, you know, devolve power down. It's not about the leader of the council having all the uh, strings and being able to, you know, make all the decisions. It's about actually empowering not just local councillors, for my part, Tory, more importantly, local communities. And we started that journey 12 years ago with something called community assemblies, where we gave real power and real budgets uh, down to a local level and allowed councillors to make decisions. And actually, uh, the community assembly that myself and Paul Scribble were in, we went a step further and said, actually, let's not just have councillors making decisions, let's have participatory budgeting where the community actually comes in. And uh, we did it at the Friends Meeting House where local communities decided like a dragon's den about which projects were important for them. And on that occasion, neither me or Paul Scriven's leader council had any say. We, we devolved it to the local community. So w- w- do we take it then that on the referendum, which also happens at the same time, you would favour the um, the cabinet model as opposed to the strong leader model. The, the committee system, yes, Toby. We, well, you know, about the committee the, system, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the first things I did when I took over as leader in 2016. Is actually a joint notice of motion at the time with the Green leader, uh, Rob Murphy. We basically said, look, it's not working here. People are incredibly frustrated by the council. Everything's been centralised. What we need to do is a different way of doing politics, where we actually trust. Uh, councillors, because they are they, they all have a democratic mandate. You know, people from across this city vote for our councillors. So why should they not have a voice? Why should it just be centralised in ten individuals in the council? Well, absolutely, uh, I'm for that referendum. I'll be uh, voting for it myself and asking anyone who will listen to me to vote for it as well. And you mentioned this is about uh, local politics, not national politics, but of course, most of the electorate haven't heard of any of the Lib Dem candidates on there sheet of paper, they've all heard of Nick Clegg. So, of course, everything gets under the umbrella of national politics, and of course, you've got to try and win seats in areas that felt that the, the, the Conservative administration showed up by Nick Clegg didn't do them any favours. You do all right in the leafy suburbs, but how are you going to get how are you going to get votes off the Greens, and how are you going to get the votes in Firth Park? Well, look, Toby, last time round, in 2019, we won Baton. Uh, for the first time ever, any any party other than Labour actually elected a council in Bob McCann in Baton, which is what basically Baton Pit Village, Hackenfall council estates. So it's not your traditional leafy areas. And 
clearly, uh, if we are to govern the, our city, then we've got to, you know, care about Firth Park. And I incredibly care about Firth Park. I, it's, it's where I used to work for the co-op there at the shopping centre. I know lots of people there. So, you know, it, it, this is about the whole of Sheffield. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Stocksbridge or Shire Green. You know, we want to give everybody uh, who's fed up and doesn't feel they listen to a chance to have a say. And my my clear message to people is, if you want change, you're going to have to vote for it. And we are the only credible alternative to the Labour Party. Either Bob Johnson will be running this council, or I'll be running this council, but it's up to the people of Sheffield to decide uh, in May. I mean, the chances are it's going to be neither of you, and it is going to be no overall control. That's the, a bigger chance than, than, than just one of you. Uh, that being the case, would you be prepared to work collegially with Bob Johnson or with... Douglas Johnson or with whoever. Yeah, I work with either Councillor Johnson. To be honest with you, I've never, I've never been uh, that tribal in my politics. Clearly, I'm a liberal through and through, so I'll be wanting both Councillors Johnson to sign up to actually a different way of governing this city, a more collaborative way of governing it. And clearly, we would like to look at not just the city centre, but actually uh, the shopping centres right across uh, our city. So therefore, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to work with either Councillor Johnsons as long as they are first acknowledge that the city has to change. There has to be a different way the council works. More importantly, we've got to loosen our grip here in the town hall, i.e. the town hall doesn't always know best. Actually, there's people in the communities, activists, you know, people involved in the culture industries, craft industries, business themselves that should be empowered and we should be those enablers uh, of uh, you know uh, letting those you know individuals and organisations actually better inform us. It's too for too long we've just had ten people in the town hall making all the decisions, and basically a lot of lots and lots of people out there have been disillusioned. So I'm happy to work with either or both in the interest of taking our city forward. It's interesting you say lots of people disillusioned. I think I mean the vast majority of people of, of, of people. Uh, and either he's illusioned or not disillusioned. Most people don't care about local politics. How do you change that? Well, we've got to get start to engage with them. It's been difficult during lockdown, but we've tried social media. And like you say, we've got to go back into, you know, rather than just being based in the town hall, I'd like to see 30% of our city council officers based in the locality, out of the city centre, out of the town hall, actually based in those communities so that they can actually see what's happening on the ground and actually engage with them. And yeah, we've got a huge rebuilding task because lots of people are disengaged and, you know, turnout for local elections is a lot lower. I want to increase that. And one way is I'd be out there like all is ham Toby. I'm passionate. I'm passionate about young people in particular. Uh, and we want to kind of, you know, engage with those groups of people that feel left out. And therefore, it doesn't matter which part of the city you are. I would care for you and I would want you to actually fulfill your potential. It's a basic liberal principle for me, you know, creating those ladders of opportunity. No matter, you know, what your background is, where you come from. You know, I've always said this is a city of opportunity. This is why it attracted my grandfather, father and uncles. You know, we all came here with hardly anything, as my dad used to tell me. And, you know, this city has given us everything. And it would be one of the biggest privileges of my life to be able to, you know, give something back to this city that's given me and my family so much. Shafak, thank you very much indeed. That's uh, the leader of the Lib Dem group here in uh, Sheffield, Shafak Mohammed. BBC Radio Sheffield.